Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at ESCs. Now, these are the ESCs I've tested throughout this year, and I think some from the previous year as well, but these are the ones that really stood out either for good and some for bad. So let's get started here. Now, as you can tell, we have a mixture of 4 one ESCs and single standalone ESCs. Now, let's start with some of the 4 one ESCs. So let's just move the standalone ESCs here to the side. And these are the ones that really stand out to me the most here. As you can tell, well, maybe you don't know. So just give me a second. All right, so here we go. So here's some. I do have a lot more ESCs, but these are the ones, like I mentioned before, that just stood out. Some of them are on builds right now. So let's go ahead and talk about these. All right, so before I begin, if you wanted to know how these tested, these have all been tested on the channel, so you can check my playlist, and you can go ahead and find how they tested. Now, let's get started. Now, you might say, what is this? Well, this is the Dal RC engine. This is the first version. So as you can tell, I removed the heatsink. I don't know where I placed it. It's just so we can take a look at how it is inside. Now, this is a very good ESC. This is a very good 4-in-1 ESC. But if you put, you know, if you push it too much on a 5S and if you put a 6S, one of the one of the couple of FETs could possibly immediately die or just get really weak and about to die and cause a lot of issues here. So that's something that's needed you need to take note of when you're using the Dal RC engine, the first version. Now, moving up here, we have the Spedex IS30 or IS100. I'll have a link down below. Now this one tested absolutely terrible and I got so much crap for this, but it really did test terrible and I would not recommend this to anyone. So that's one ESC that I would not recommend. This was the new hobby wing. Where is it? There it is. This stack that costs a hundred bucks right here. Only I think like the fourth test, this thing blew up on me. So if you take a closer look right there, these two FETs, that FET is about to melt, and this one is just completely ruined right there. So I did do the testing for this, and that's how this one died. And a lot of people are reporting this one catching fire, and as well as basically just burning itself out. So this thing does come with a 1035 volt micro, uh, low ESR capacitor, and as well as I think a 560. And uh, once I removed the capacitor, because you know, I started testing with a cap, and then I removed it, because everything else here got tested with no capacitor, and that's when it burned. And another thing about the FETs here, the data sheet on these FETs say that they're just up to 30 amps, around 25C uh, degrees Celsius, if I remember correctly. But they're, anyways, their maximum rating is 30 amps, which is very, very shameful to say 45 amps on your stack, and you're using very tiny FETs, and uh, it just burns. I mean, for example, let's put this into perspective here, actually. Here's a $10 ESC, if I find it. One second. Here it is. There we go. Hack RC, $10 ESC. This one outperformed this one in both noise and as well as longevity. And it's a lot lighter too, and it's a lot cheaper. And um, yeah, so, so yeah, sorry about that, got interrupted. So this thing is $10, and this thing is very expensive. And they're using the same size FETs here. I haven't read the FETs on this guy, but maybe we'll do that in a later video when we go into detail on the MOSFETs on these guys, because the FETs play a very big role, as well as the, the filtration on board plays even a bigger role sometimes. So, yeah, this one is a no-go for me. I do apologize for the fanboys that love Hobbywing, but Hobbywing, this was very, very not good. So, yeah, this is just, um, yeah, it wasn't the greatest, and I do, you know, I know there's a lot of fanboys there, but it just didn't perform that well. All right, let's put this to the side here. So we finished with the hobby wing stack. Let's put these two here because I like these two and these one. And uh, yeah, this one, the Spedex, wasn't great. I got so much crap for it. I don't know why. I just showed you the test and some of you are like, oh, no, your testing is bullshit. Everything is bullshit. Whatever. Uh, this tested very bad. And um, a lot of people also emailed me saying, yes, it's true. So put that to the side. All right, so we're left with these four four and one ESCs here. Now these really stand out. These actually perform very well. There's also another one that I've tested recently, which was the DYS Aria four and one ESC. Now I had a lot of hopes for it because the DYS Aria standalone ESC like this one is very good. Now the four and one ESC didn't test so well, and uh, you can also find the video for that, and you can go ahead and check it out. But that one is is not really recommended. It just like uh, it just it just didn't test as good as these here. So. Um, but it's still okay, but if you had a choice other than that, I would definitely jump on something else. So that's something with DYS Aria. Now these here, how do these stack up? Well, this is the Dal RC engine. This is Dal RC rocket, uh, 50 amp version. This is the most expensive Dal RC. I do have the, the newer version that's less expensive than this one, which is coming on the way. 
And uh, here's the Tico 32. And here is the Airbot Ori stack. Now, this stack was incredible. Um, I tested this with the same scenarios as I test these. And as well as this one, which this one burned on. These are the top four 4 in 1 ESCs. Now, this Ori stack is a 20 by 20 stack, which makes it absolutely phenomenal. Now, I remember a lot of people were trying to go with the HDLRC stack. Uh, to, to the HLRC stack for Featherlight builds with like 2206 motors and stuff and it's burning left and right That thing can't handle even the pads are absolutely terrible on that thing I mean, I had it on a three inch and they just ripped off. However, this Ori 32 is a whole different start This is a proper made 20 by 20 stack that can withstand a lot of uh, amperage Which I was just amazed at to be honest. It's, it's a really good stack I ran it with I think 2450 KV's brother hobby R7 2306 motors like I do with all 4-in-1 ESCs and it held absolutely phenomenal. It didn't just hold up absolutely phenomenal. It's in the top four ESCs, which is absolutely crazy. Um, any of these ESCs are really good. These two are really good. Filtration on the Tico 32 is the best. Then the Dal RC rocket would come in second just by a little bit. But plus the Dal RC rocket has a heat sink, which kind of dissipates the heat. Thus, Theoretically, possibly, you know, making them as good as each other. This one might have a bit more power delivery, but, you know, you, I can't really measure something like that right now. But these two are in the same league right here. And uh, also, these two are in about the same league right here. So the Ori 32, again, is a 20 by 20 stack, which is crazy to make it on the 30 by 30 stack setups. Uh, I was just amazed and impressed with this one. And the Dal RC Rocket, still on my favorite quads. It's still a beast. However, if you're going for 6S and 5S, uh, you could use it on 5S, but I'd highly recommend you just stick to 4S with this one. You got this new bad boy right here, which has bigger MOSFETs, as you can tell. Filtration looks still looks pretty good. There's a little bit more filtration on the Dell RC rocket, but these two performed almost identical, which was uh, which was pretty crazy, actually. Oh, that goes there. All right. So you might say, why, why are the heat sink falling off? Because I removed it. Once you remove it, then that's it. You just can't put it back on. Maybe if I heat it up a little. All right, so let's put, move the 4-in-1 ESCs to the side here. Let's bring in some normal ESCs. So here, this one was tested, I think, this year. This one was tested last year and this year. This one was tested last year and this year. I think it came up last year. This one was tested this year. Uh, the Spedex IS-30, it's on, it's on a quad right here. Uh, this is a very good, very good ESC. I'll show you that one a little bit. Uh, what else do we have? We have this one here. We have the F3 ESCs from Hollybro uh, right there. So that's it right there. So how did these test? Well, these tested, let me take a little look real quick. They tested okay. This one would, I would consider it as the last. I'm not saying it's terrible, but out of these, this one would be the worst out of these here. This one isn't really practical because, you know, the Tico 32 is a pretty large ESC. This one's even larger, as you can tell. This is for some kind of a monster setup, in a way. Filtration was pretty good. Actually, really good on this, the filtration. They're just using very, very big capacitors, which have higher farad rating, thus, and probably even very good MOSFETs. It does have a very, very big heat sink as well. So this one, I wouldn't consider it to be for these high, maybe a fixed wing type of style or some 10-inch prop monster. Uh, but this one tested really good. So I just thought I'd leave it on the list as well here. Now let's go to the mini quad section here. Now there's some other good ones that are not really here. So let's move this one also. So this is running an F3 microcontroller unit, which is faster than any other ESC that we've ever had and probably ever seen. And um, it tested really good with a minimal amount of filtration. If you take a look at this, it's actually pretty crazy. So this is going to be a future-proof ESC. Obviously, this is the first version. They're going to release a second version anytime, anytime soon now. And it'll probably even be a little bit better. But even if it's a little bit better, it's it's this is still a really, really good ESC. It's actually on the same class of the DYS Aria. So that is actually pretty spectacular to to um, probably even a little bit better than the DYS Aria. I don't really remember. You just go you can go ahead and check out the, the video for these two and see which one's best. I forgot. But these are in the same class, that's for sure. I know that for sure. So these ESCs are really good. Tico 32, the all-time best ESC in terms of filtration and use and it's look at you know it's properly made you got huge mosfets here very good very solid look at the filtration you got two tantalums 
uh, you have current sensing, you have uh, just everything. It's just really nice. It's really nice made. Telemetry has everything. So this is the number one ESC still to this day that I've ever tested. Now let's move down to the budget ESCs. We have these Hack RC $10 ESCs. I'll leave a link to everything down below so you know which one exactly I'm talking about. So the Hack RC here was a very good one as well. Um, also, there's two other budget ones that were really, really remarkable actually. The Spedex IS, I forgot which one, IS30, I think. These are D, this is a D Shot 600 ESC here. So let's just remember, yeah, the IS30. So it's the Spedex IS30. This is a very, very good ESC. It's very cheap as well. This was a premium ESC back then. Now it dropped in price because they released, you know, the newer GS versions and stuff. I haven't tested those yet, but I do have some on the way. But yeah, that one is a, uh, it's a very, very good budget ESC considered budget because of the price drop that's it this is also a very good budget ESC and then also the fly color Raptor BLS uh, ESC is also a very good budget ESC I'll have a link to everything down below whether you can get them from my shop or you can get them from Banggood or whatever I'll leave a link to everything down below so yeah those you know this is the overall sum up currently of what are we the third quarter of 2018 yeah, we're about to start the fourth quarter. So it's a sum up till the third quarter of 2018 uh, of ESCs and what, you know, what I would personally go with, really. Uh, I would go with this. I would go with this. I would go with this. If I had to, I would go with this. The Spedex IS-30, the fly color. And for 4 one ESCs, these are the monsters that I would use right here. Uh, these are the ones that I'd highly recommend using uh, from testing and, 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 and using basically mostly bench testing some of these i've used in the real world this one i've used this one i've tested in real world this one not yet this one i have this one i have definitely this one i have not this one i have and this one i still have not which is the dell rc rocket here the dell rc engine is still really nice but a lot of people are complaining about the pins they listen they removed the pins on the new one so yeah it's really nice of them and well I think that's going to include it for this video, guys. I don't know how long it was, but I think, you know, a lot of e I've gotten a lot of emails to do just a quick recap and a re, re -sum just summarize everything that I've tested so far uh, instead of just going through every single video. But yeah, here's the, you know, the, these are what I'd really recommend uh, I, I, from my testing. Uh, there's probably better somewhere out there that I've never tested. For example, I still have these here, which I'm about to test today or tomorrow. Anyways, this week, they're really nice. They're from uh, Sunny Sky, but they're pretty big too. I and mean, they're really long, as you can tell here. They added like an extra to put that filter filtration looks really good actually. Well, not as good as the Tigo 32, but it's pretty good here. So that's really nice. I don't know how these will perform just yet, but these are Beale Holly S2 to 6S. So we'll see how well those do over there. And well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the like button and also the bell icon. And if you're interested in the fun DIY projects, go ahead and check out my new channel called IDIY Things. I'll be uploading, you know, like three times a week or two times a week to that channel. But very interesting things and uh, getting you started into DIY, schematics, PCB designing, manufacturing and all these kinds of crazy cool things. And um, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I uh, will see you in the next one. Peace out.